Hi, and welcome to Secure. As in prior videos you've watched, we went over the basic solutions overview of the Secure. In those prior videos, we've talked about the installation of the Chrome extension, our Smart Pack solution, and DNS. This video will be focused on our DNS solution, uh, how it's deployed, and what is DNS. So, DNS is essentially the phone book for the internet. A device that asks to get to a website by name will be provided an address by a DNS service, and that address is in the form of a public IP, and that is what directs traffic through various forms of routing and protocols across the internet to get to the destination in which it is intended to go to. Securely has adapted this DNS mechanism to selectively grab traffic from your infrastructure get it to our infrastructure so we can do things like authenticate that traffic, log it, and filter it if necessary. And how we accomplish that is a very clever mechanism that I'm going to demonstrate today and talk a little bit about. First and foremost, you'll be getting documentation from either support or your solutions architect on the numbers that you will need to point to for DNS. Uh, also, with the instructions, we'll become uh, the instructions on how to install our Securely certificate, which is required for all of our different delivery vehicles, Smart Pack, Chrome Extension, and DNS solution. And this certificate allows us to decrypt SSL traffic to take a closer look at it, scan it, apply a modification to that traffic, such as keyword blocking. So I do have a simple Active Directory server configured here. This is your standard configuration for both GPO and DNS across most any infrastructure. So that's the kind of the example platform that we will be using today. This particular server, as you can see, as policy management snap in pulled up, I do have the securely cert deployed at the top level of the domain and enforced so that anything inherited wise could not interfere with it. Certificates do not uh, really apply anything other than allow the decryption of traffic. So if you are in the process or you're about to be in the process of deploying the securely solution, please consider deploying the certificate before the call with your solutions architect or the very first thing that you do if you are going to self-deploy. The certificate is easy to deploy. There's very specific instructions based on platform and it will not turn anything on or interfere with any solution that you might be replacing. It is very wise to deploy this ahead of time. So if we're talking about a single device deployment, like a Windows machine, we have very specific instructions on the Securely knowledge base. The knowledge base, again, is found at support.securely.com. We have a very nice knowledge base with lots of instructions on all of our different platforms. They're very easy to read, and they're very well documented in terms of steps. So deploying to a single device is as simple as editing your network adapter to point at the very specific uh, Securely DNS servers that you have been given or what cluster that you're located on wherever you are at. So the deployment of a single device is very simple. But uh, today, let's talk a little bit more about deployment infrastructure-wide for an entire network. And that is usually done through a forwarding mechanism. So this particular server that we have here as an example today is configured with Google. You know, Google's a good basis for DNS for anything from residential to I see some business and school infrastructures use this as a forwarding mechanism. So let's take Google, for example, and let's let's just ask Google on how to get somewhere. Let's say Google itself. Let's say I'm going to the main search engine. You know, I'm going to query Google. And since I'm querying Google from this particular server that has Google configured as a forwarder, it's going to ask how to get there. And I'm going to get a Google server address. And that's how my traffic is going to get directed to Google. That's how the page is going to render eventually and how I'm going to make my search. But if we take something like the securely forwarding service and we configure that, what happens when we make a request for something? So we're going to apply the securely forwarding. We're going to clear cache on this server and via the workstation itself here. And then I'm going to ask DNS now that I have securely configured as a forwarder uh, how to get to Google. And what it's going to actually do is it's going to give securely AWS address instead of Google's original destination. This is how securely is selectively grabbing your traffic when you have it deployed in your infrastructure instead of going to the original destination. Securely is going to say, hey, wait a minute. Let's go over here. 
let's inspect the traffic, let's get you authenticated, get your username and the, and the results and the logs. And this is a very lightweight and clever mechanism in order to grab traffic. Now let's talk about a little bit about the selective behavior of this. This means that I'm no longer interfering with servers. I'm no longer interfering, when I, when I say servers, I mean HVAC servers, video surveillance systems that may be at the particular infrastructure or filtering. There's no reason for a solution like Securely to grab that kind of traffic and allowing us to use this kind of selective mechanism makes for less exceptions inside your web filter, which means you're gonna have an easier time deploying the solution. Let's make an example of that. There's really no reason for Securely to categorize something like Apple updates. Now, a customer could always go back and block something explicitly, regardless of whether it's in the Securely database or not. But by default, let's, uh, let's look up something like apple.com, which is where your iOS, your Mac OS X devices would get their updates. And so you can see that I'm getting a real IP for Apple. So our solution is very clever in the fact that it's not going to interfere with traffic that is important to infrastructure, Windows updates, Apple updates, online banking, those types of things are not filtered by the Securely solution. With that in mind, that uh, is basically an example of how the production DNS product is deployed. Basically, you deploy the certificate, set up your forwarders, you would allow some time for the certificate to propagate in a network. If you just press the deploy button today, it's going to take some time to get all your devices, whether you're deploying with Active Directory or an MDM, so you need to account for that time. But once it's deployed, uh, your production infrastructure would be filtered. So that moves us to a very important conversation about guest devices in BYOD. So with a solution like this where I have to install a securely cert, what do I do for things that are not owned by the district for guest devices, perhaps for a football game or a wireless infrastructure at an event? How does securely provide a solution for that? And that is also a great avenue and topic of discussion. Let's talk about it. So traditionally, the way that Securely accomplishes this is if you want to go to our knowledge base and search guest network, you'll get an article such as this, but it very quickly summarizes this article. Basically, you can take a particular network or VLAN in your infrastructure, route that out your firewall via a different public address than your normal traffic uses. Securely can tell our servers, hey, when you see traffic coming from customers' infrastructure, it's hidden behind a very specific public. Here's that public. Securely, I want you to know that that's guest traffic. Traditionally, that's been the way that we deployed. And that's still a, a very valid way to do a, a guest infrastructure, but now Securely has introduced a much easier way to do guests. And we now have a different set of DNS servers, just like our production forwarders that we've demonstrated in the video. Securely now has guest DNS servers that you can deploy via DHCP to accomplish the same guest functionality. Furthermore, there's also a mechanism that we've developed into our own website to detect the operating system or the user agent of a device and offer the correct cert package. And that is www.securely.com forward slash SSL. So if you have a BYOD infrastructure where someone wants to jump on the production network, they want to install a cert, they've agreed to do that, that's fine. But obviously you don't manage it, so your deployment services like Active Directory are not going to be in control of that device. Well, you can navigate to this portion of our website. It will detect and see if you have the cert already installed. And if you don't, it'll take a look at your user agent and provide you with the necessary instructions on how to install a cert. It doesn't matter if you're on an iPad, a phone, or a desktop device, it will detect your operating system and tell you if the cert's installed. And if it is, great. If not, it will offer you the package. You'll notice that I'm on a Windows device right now. It is detected that as such. And even though it is installed, the instructions are still provided in a quick and easy deployment, executable, and a video explaining how it works. So this is a really easy and uh, clever way to get certificates on stuff that you don't own, like BYOD. So that concludes our DNS explanation and product rollout. Thank you for joining today.